Today's video is sponsored by Cheesy Pasta. Oh, we're back again with the Cheesy Pasta. Cheesy Pasta, the mixer faster. Knife, knife, <laughs> serial killer, serial killer. My fucking spoon fell in. All right, folks, Batchy here. And today, we're talking about high school, or as it was more commonly known, prison for anyone between the ages of 11 and 18, or 15 if you were me in the school decided they'd had enough of your pish and decided to ship you off to college. Before we get into today's video though, I just want to announce that I will be attending Resonate Total Gaming Festival at the SECC in Glasgow on October the 19th, 20th and 21st. I'll be doing meet and greets, stage stuff and I'll also be launching some exclusive grown up Scottish merch. You can use the link in the description to pick up your tickets and make sure you use code BATCHY to get 20% off. Make sure you also follow me on Twitter to find out more about the events I'm doing and how to get involved in future videos. Shout out to the notification squad. High school in Scotland was the transitional period in life that took you from sticking your schoolwork up on the wall to acne. In a worryingly quick period of time, you'd go from playing heads down thumbs up to teenage pregnancy. It was a shock to the system. One of the big changes for me was going from pencils to pens. It doesn't seem like a big thing, but pens were a no-go in my primary school. They were the forbidden fruit. Getting caught with a pen in primary school was the equivalent of getting caught underage drinking. Teachers would go mental. But on my first day of high school, I'm sitting looking round at my mates like, here, are we actually using pens? Looking back, there probably wasn't enough of a pencil to pen transition period cause, eh, uh, all we did was just run about and draw dicks on things. Lockers, walls, school bags, each other. In my defence though, they didn't just hand an 11 year old some loaded stationery without the proper training. I think one of the biggest changes though, was the school blazers. Most schools had them. You would go for primary school where you could rock up with one shoe, no school bag and a shite haircut, to arriving on the scene every morning like a banned clothing advert for smart casual. It was kinda pish when you think about it, living out your teenage years as the education system's fashion accessory. What made it worse was knowing that every year they would force you to go down and get a school picture, queuing up like lambs for the slaughter in your pen covered blazer for what was essentially just going to be the mugshot they would use on the news if you ever went off the rails. The school itself was a wee bit different from primary school. I mean first up you had the patter. Every single comeback in high school was your ma. What are you doing? Your ma. What time is it? Your ma. What's the square root of your ma? Now I'm not trying to say that we lacked creativity, it just didn't matter how many times we said it, it was still funny. Another odd thing about the high school too was that every single desk had about a hundred bits of chewing gum stuck underneath it and I've no idea why. Hardly anybody ever bought chewing gum. That became pretty obvious when you cracked open a packet of peppermint Wrigley's Extra and the entire continent would flock round you like the seagulls for finding Nemo. Mine. Okay, don't make any sudden moves. I go to high school, you're suddenly dropped into this world of different classes. No longer did you have to put up with the same crabbit face teacher for an entire year. Now you had about 10 of them, and every single one would come with their own wee quirks. Like we had a maths teacher that got sacked for swearing in class. We had a Spanish teacher who got suspended for making a porno. And we also had a biology teacher who I'm certain was considered legally dead. He was so old yet he still somehow had a job. I've no idea how. He would literally fall asleep in class and just get up and go for wonders halfway through lessons. He was so much a part of the furniture at our school that we used to joke that the only reason he was still employed was so that when he died, the biology department would get a fresh new skeleton. The other thing about schools was the corridors. Most schools seemed to have this mad system in place where you could only really walk one way down a certain corridor. Only when it was busy though, when everybody was in class, the corridors would just turn into this universal waiting room for punishment. Anytime you did anything wrong, you were sent out to go and stand in the corridor. If you were lucky, there was sometimes an empty bottle of juice lying about that you could kick about and use as a football. If not, you were doomed to stand there reading and rereading the same boring posters on the wall. Sometimes if the teacher forgot about you, you could stand there just long enough to see somebody else getting kicked out of their class further up the corridor, and suddenly you would have a friend. This was actually the first time I ever found out about a game called Bobby. It was just like bogeys, with a different name. He said Bobby to me, I said Bobby back. He said it back louder, I said it back louder. We just kept going back and forth getting louder and louder and louder until my teacher swung open the door, stormed out of the class and shouted Right that's it, I've had enough. I don't want one more Bobby for either ease.
So it wasn't very often that you got a day off school. You either had to be bod deep in snow, or so ill that the school organised a fundraiser for you. Out with that, you never really wanted to take a day off in case you missed something. Honestly, you could attend every single day for three years where nothing happened, but the first time you took a sickie, you had missed three fights, a fire alarm, and the maths teacher having a mental breakdown in the lunch hall. At the same time though, you didn't want to end up feeling sick at school, because the school nurse was normally just a middle-aged, overly aggressive receptionist on her third marriage. Six kids and two divorces under her belt meant that she really didn't have the patience for your health concerns. You could rock up with an arm broken in 17 places, and the best she would offer you was a cup of water. The remains of your elbow literally being carried around in a wee plastic doggy bag and all she could say was, here, have a damp blue paper towel. I mean, come on. We all know damp paper towels are not designed for medical emergencies. They were designed for being stuck to the toilet ceilings. Snow days were a little bit different. You'd wade your way into registration after the compulsory snowball turf war with a neighbour in high school and grab yourself a seat, but you'd keep your jacket on, just in case. Getting sent home because of the snow was a rare occurrence, but if your teacher was late, you'd start to think that something was going down. Rumours would start spreading around the class like wildfire that a snow day might be on the cards, but you don't want to believe it just yet. Five minutes would pass, ten minutes would pass, fifteen minutes would pass. By this point, everybody's already planning what they're going to do with their day off. I'm going to go down the park and chuck snowballs at seagulls. I'm going to go down the road and pack wee Stevie's house with snow so he can't get out. The excitement's building, everyone's on the edge of their seat as the door slowly swings open and the registration teacher walks in. It's a snow day. See, the first time that ever happened to us, our class just erupted. I jumped up on the desk and started swinging my cock-covered blazer around my head, accidentally knocking a statue of Jesus flying across the room, and my mate just stood up and shouted, "Your ma!" Anyway, that's about all the time we have for in today's episode of Grown Up Scottish. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to drop it a wee like. Remember to check out tickets to resonate in the description and follow me on Twitter to get more involved in future videos. If you're interested, I've left a link in the description to a mad wee video we made of myself and Cruiser driving to every single city in Scotland to play Jenga. Anyway, thank you for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.